bring in Professor Michael Ayamga. He's an applied economist at the West African Center for Sustainable Rural Transformation at the University of Professional Studies. Thank you for your time here on News Text. Just wrapping through this survey, um, one of the key things that pops up is the possibility of a run-up, a uh, run-off in the coming election. What's your thoughts about it? Hey, yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, just a quick one. I'm from the University for Development Studies, not for uh, Professional Studies. Uh, let me just uh, put that on the record okay. before. I lose my job. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was just by the way. Uh, usually, when you get a report like this, uh, before you even delve into discussing the results, uh, you have to subject the uh, report to uh, uh, some uh, validity and credibility uh, test. Is this actually worth your time going into it? Is it robust uh, research? Uh, does the methodology reflect uh, uh, what happens in an election or that does it take into account uh, how voting patterns occur in the country and uh, the attempt to uh, capture these dynamics in the pool before you even go to discuss uh, the, the, the numbers. And looking at the report, uh, it, it's laughable. I just think that this wouldn't even pass as a BST dissertation, just looking at the methodology. Uh, we are talking of an election uh, where you have uh, one party basically doing well in two regions and winning the elections, and the others doing well in even seven or eight and still losing the elections. And you go on to uh, say you are doing multi state sampling, and you end up selecting five constituencies, uh, electoral areas randomly, and then uh, going on to select individuals. Uh, based on their registration, and now looking for those individuals to interview them. That is uh, uh, one of the problems. The methodology uh, is flawed. You wouldn't, I wouldn't even accept that for a BSc uh, dissertation. Then you go to table 2.1. Uh, you look at the uh, distribution of uh, the voters based on uh, 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 what you call it, their uh, employment. And you have, for example, just in the male category, Fishermen and farmers being 60%, 60.8%, teachers being 58.4%, uh, uh, traders being 26.6%, uh, uh, artisans being 57 And even if you allow for multiple responses, you are not going to come up with this. And it magically adds up to 48.9%. First of all, you have a distribution that actually uh, doesn't reflect uh, reality. And you go on to uh, begin to make uh, projections based on this. Uh, so I feel that methodology-wise, and even the presentation of the data, this is probably someone uh, who either sat in his office, took money, and then uh, did his things, or he sent probably very inexperienced teaching uh, assistants. I can assure you that my teaching assistants will do a better job at this than what I'm seeing. So it's laughable. I don't think that this is deserves our discussion. But for argument's sake, uh, let's uh, go into it and then uh, look at how uh, bizarre the results are. First of all,